This is Devin Nunes v. Twitter. I mean, I mean, really, just the politician v. Twitter. Are we serious? Like, just, we don't even need to know what it's about. Already, this is just going to be weird. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So this is supposedly a remarkable memorandum in support of the motion to quash the subpoena, which we'll see at the end of the thing. So let's just jump into it. The plaintiff in this case, Devin Nunes, is a politician and former dairy farmer serving as the U.S. representative for California's 22nd Congressional District. Plaintiff, now plaintiff is Devin Nunes, and the person who's filing this is uh, Mr. Park Homenko, who has received a, uh, some kind of subpoena, which we will get, it's going to describe it in here. Plaintiff, Devin Nunes, filed this case alleging defamation, insulting words, and civil conspiracy relating to the publication by defendant, Twitter, defendant Liz Mayer, defendant Mayer Strategies, and two anonymous Twitter users of tweets satirizing or criticizing Mr. Nunes. In the pertinent part here, plaintiff joined as defendants, which means they joined them to the lawsuit, two anonymous parody Twitter accounts. The defendant Devin Nunes Cow, at Devin Cow Twitter account, and Devin Nunes Mom, at Devin Nunes Mom Twitter account. The Devin Nunes Cow account is an anonymous Twitter user, which apparently purports to be a cow, owned by Mr. Nunes, which posts satirical and hyperbolic insults regarding Mr. Nunes, many of which are filled with cow puns. He's utterly worthless, a treasonous cowpoke. Devin's boots are full of manure. And Devin is way, W-H-E-Y, Devin is way over his head in crime. And it's past your time to move him to, past your time, past your time to move him to prison. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. The other anonymous Twitter user, Devin Nunes Mom, is another ostensible parody account which purports to be plaintiff's mother and posts hyperbolic insults about Mr. Nunes, which are frequently accompanied by mothering, nagging, and child-raising jokes, treating plaintiff as a misbehaving child. Are you trying to obstruct a federal investigation again? You come home right this instant or no more Minecraft! And claiming plaintiff was voted most likely to commit treason in high school. Plaintiff contends these two anonymous accounts are defaming him, constitute insulting words under the law, and alleges a conspiracy between all the defendants, so conspiracy to commit a criminal offense, basically, or I guess in this case to commit civil defamation. He is seeking damages of $250 million dollars that's that's not 250,000 which would already be absurd for a public politician which there's no such thing as a private politician by the way a public politician has a completely different level of defamation that has to be proven it's really difficult to prove that level of defamation and here he's asking not for an absurdly high number of $250,000, but $250 million or a greater amount because of punitive damages, fees, and injunctive relief. Plaintiff attempted to serve a subpoena, as again, plaintiff is Devin Nunes, attempted to serve a subpoena to Adam Parkamenko, a non-party seeking documents showing the identity of defendant Devin Nunes Cow and defendant Nunes Mom accounts. Mr. Parkamenko's counsel has accepted service of process for purposes of filing this motion. So I don't even know who Mr. Parkamenko is yet in all this. Let's maybe maybe it'll tell us. And so they get into some of the things that they haven't done following a local rule of Virginia courts. The Supreme Court of Virginia has created a process for filing attorney-issued subpoenas. This subpoena is invalid because it was not filed with the Enrico County Circuit Court Clerk. 
Mr. Parkamenko is a non-party to the case and has not been served with any pleadings aside from this subpoena. However, his counsel checked the docket sheet in this matter, which reflects no filed subpoenas or supporting materials as of the date of this motion, November 26, 2019. A copy of the current docket sheet is Exhibit B, and so that's why that's going to be there. An attorney issued subpoena, uh, Duches or Duces Tatum, Tatum. I think it's do chase take them, must be signed as if a pleading and must contain the attorney's address, telephone number, and Virginia State Bar identification number. A copy of the subpoena must be mailed or delivered to the clerk of court in which the case is pending on the day of issuance with a certificate that a copy thereof has been served pursuant to the rules, etc. Here, the subpoena was not filed or timely mailed to the clerk's office and the rule was not complied with, and the subpoena is therefore invalid. That's a pretty good defense, but there's going to be a kind of a problem with that because, okay, the subpoena is invalid, great, reissue the subpoena. They do it proper the next time. So we need more substantive arguments why this so subpoena idea is invalid and not just this one subpoena. So next, plaintiffs have not complied with another rule. For centuries, courts have recognized a protected interest in anonymous communications, quote, an author's decision to remain anonymous like other decisions concerning omissions or additions to the content of a publication is an aspect of the freedom of speech protected by the First Amendment. Some of America's most famous political treatises or summaries, such as Common Sense by Thomas Paine or The Federalist Papers by James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay, writing as Publius, were authored anonymously. With the expansion and proliferation of discourse and communication over the internet, protection of privacy has become a paramount issue such that the General Assembly adopted special statutory standards to protect the privacy of individuals communicating anonymously over the internet in order to prevent a chilling effect on free speech. Indeed, the courts have found that political speech merits the highest protection possible from the courts. In Citizens United v. FEC, the Supreme Court noted that speech is an essential mechanism of democracy, for it is the means to hold officials accountable to the people. Go watch uh, Blackleaf's video, which is on our channel, of thank you very much, Blackleaf, about Citizens United. The, the decision might not be what you think it was, and it might not be as bad as many people make it out to be. Let's read this quote. The right of citizens to inquire, to hear, to speak, and to use information to reach consensus is a precondition to enlightened self-government and a necessary means to protect it. The First Amendment has its fullest and most urgent application to speech uttered during a campaign for political office. For these reasons, political speech must prevail against laws that would suppress it, whether by design or inadvertence. Laws that burden political speech are subject to strict scrutiny, which requires the government to prove that the restriction furthers a compelling interest and is narrowly tailored to achieve that interest. Consistent with such heightened protection, the Code of Virginia requires that in order to serve a subpoena to a non-governmental person or entity for documents identifying an anonymous individual engaging in internet communications, the plaintiff must file and serve supporting material with the subpoena identifying a that one or more communications that are or may be tortious or illegal have been made by the anonymous communicator, or that the party requesting the subpoena has a legitimate good faith basis to contend that such a party is the victim of conduct actionable in the jurisdiction where the suit was filed. So in other words, that there is a real legal claim. A copy of the communications that are the subject of the action shall be submitted plaintiff is required to serve the supporting materials on the recipient and certify that no motion to dismiss, demurrer, or summary judgment is pending, which it wouldn't be in a new thing like this. In this case, no supporting affidavit or material was filed by plaintiff with respect to this subpoena. The complaint purportedly refers to hundreds of defamatory posts at issue in this action. However, the majority of those actual posts are not attached, nor were they filed with the subpoena. Moreover, the complaint itself fails to show that the anonymous parody accounts 
Devin Nunes Cow and Devin Nunes Mom actually made any actionable defamatory statements as a matter of law. So that means that they had to attach proof or at least at least the allegation of what is the defamatory statement or statements. And instead of attaching these hundreds of defamatory statements in screenshots or, or what you know even just a quote of the statement, they only attached one or two, at least it appears to be. So that's another really great argument that this not only is this subpoena invalid, but this whole lawsuit is what we call a slap, a strategic lawsuit against public participation. Let's go through the economics. Um, Lawful Masses currently has a pretty okay budget for a small time production, a budget in the four digits. So a few thousand dollars a month we, we, we make via revenue in YouTube. Uh, you donate about $1,700 a month or may, maybe a little bit more than that with, with throw sponsors, maybe about $2,000 a month with sponsors thrown in there. And so we have a budget somewhere around $3,000, $3,500 a month. If Lawful Masses got sued, and the other the opposing counsel filed a whole bunch of stuff and our attorney has to file a whole bunch of stuff or I have to file a whole bunch of stuff and I'm constantly being distracted from it, how long do you think it's going to be before Lawful Masses runs out of resources to defend itself? That's a strategic lawsuit against public participation. If we had done something wrong, if these parody accounts had done something wrong, truly wrong, and there was really a defamation claim here, Okay, but then you do it properly. You attach the proper evidence, you file the subpoena properly with the court clerk, and you do it properly. You can tell from the half-assed nature this is being done that it's just being used to harass the defendants. And so that's what I'm hoping this will be found. If there really was such a strong case in Devin Nunes' favor, wouldn't he be making that case instead of half-assing it? And then the next point, nothing in the complaint approaches defamatory content, even if the court assumes the complaint complies with the other requirements. So a sort of in the alternative, if those other things are somehow overlooked by the court or overcome by the plaintiff, then here's another argument. It's not defamation. And in the motion to dismiss context, and this is probably a similar context, the court will look at the plaintiff's allegations in a light most favorable to the plaintiff. So if there's any fact that's vague or equivocating, any ambivalence or anything, the judge will look in favor of the plaintiff and see if the plaintiff can plausibly sustain a claim. And I don't think there's a plausible claim here. There, there's not really even a possible claim. We're going, we're going down the scale of likelihood, less likely. Plausible is more likely than possible. Uh, and, 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 and I think this is not even possible. Even assuming the plaintiff has complied with the above requirements, the complaint does not constitute defamation or the complaint does not allege a claim for defamation. Parody and hyperbole with respect to a public figure are well recognized in Virginia as protected First Amendment speech and are not defamatory. But, 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 we're not talking about First Amendment speech being restricted by the government here. We're talking about a defamatory, allegedly defamatory statement made on Twitter. And, and Mr. French, you've said a million times that Twitter is not the government. Right, but we're asking the government to rule and say that speech that's supposed to be free speech is not. And so that's where it encroaches upon free speech. We're asking the judicial branch to make an order that infringes on free speech. So no, the, the judicial branch has to take into account free speech when it's, being, when, when it's used as an allegation like this. In the Yagel case, 1998 Virginia Supreme Court case, the Supreme Court of Virginia held that statements which cannot reasonably be interpreted as stating actual facts about a person cannot form the basis of a common law defamation action. Speakers may use language that is insulting, offensive, or otherwise inappropriate, but constitutes no more than rhetorical hyperbole. Examples of rhetorical hyperbole cited in Yeagle include referring to the plaintiff as the director of butt licking and defining a labor union scab to be a traitor, their quotes, 
and publishing a parody of an advertisement referring to a public figure. The court in Yeagle said that in such an instance, no reasonable inference could be drawn that the individual identified in the statements, as a matter of fact, engaged in the conduct described, and that these statements could not reasonably be understood to convey a false representation of an actual fact. Only statements likely to be considered true may support a defamation cause of action. Clearly humorous or incredible statements do not suffice. Parody, to the degree that it is perceived as parody by its intended audience, conveys the message that it is not the original and therefore cannot constitute a false statement of fact. And in the Hustler vs. Falwell case, Hustler ad parody was not reasonably believable and could not reasonably be understood as describing actual facts about respondent. Parody and satire do not give rise to liability in a defamation action. Both of these anonymous Twitter accounts are blatant parody accounts. No reasonable person would believe that Devin Nunes Cow actually has a Twitter account or that the hyperbole, satire, and cow-related jokes it posts are serious facts. It is self-evident that cows are domesticated livestock animals and do not have the intelligence, language, or opposable digits necessary to operate a Twitter account. Moreover, by purporting to be from a cow, with the excessive use of cow puns and cow imagery, it is plainly evident that it is not a serious news outlet. Defendant Devin Nunes' mom likewise posts satirical, patronizing, nagging, and mothering comments which ostensibly treat Mr. Nunes as a misbehaving child. In light of the content, a reasonable person, reading the accounts in context, would not take Defendant Devin Nunes' cow or Defendant Devin Nunes' mom to be serious accounts imparting actual facts about plaintiff. They are parody accounts. As such, the statements at issue in this case lack the defamatory sting necessary to state a cause of action. No alleged statements in the complaint constitute insulting words for purposes of the 1810 Anti-Dueling Act. Holy mackerel, is that what that's from? Defendant Devin Nunes Cow and Devin Nunes Mom statements do not constitute insulting words either. Virginia's infamous insulting words statute, also known as the 1810 Anti-Dueling Act, was originally adopted to mitigate the risk of dueling, but remains on the books. Virginia courts now recognize that this act no longer has the breadth as it was originally intended. Quote, application of this provision is no longer confined to its original purpose of preventing duels. It has been interpreted by Virginia courts to be virtually coextensive with the common law action for defamation and the First Amendment restrictions on the same. See Potomac Valve and Fitting Company versus Crawford Fitting Company holding that insulting words claims rise and fall together with defamation claims. Insulting words are actionable in Virginia only if they tend toward violence and breach of peace. The words must present a clear and present danger of a violent physical reaction. Devin Nunes' cow and Devin Nunes' mom accounts, read as a whole, are parody accounts and lack any overt statement or tendency to incite a riot or breach of peace. Further, defendant Devin Nunes' cow and Devin Nunes' mom's statements do not constitute a conspiracy either since the statements are not actionable, not defamatory, nor insulting words. See Dunlop v. Cotman Transmission, there can be no conspiracy to do an act that the law allows. So a common law civil conspiracy claim requires proof that some underlying tort or wrong was committed. Since the statements alleged are not defamatory or insulting words, no basis exists to permit this subpoena under the law. Next, the subpoena calls for privileged communications and attorney work product. In the alternative, the subpoena calls for, among other things, all communications between Parkamenko and any person relating to the action this request should be quashed to the extent that it calls for communication between Mr. Parkamenko and his counsel, which are protected by attorney-client privilege and or work product doctrine. 
And there's an easy way to fix that too. The, the request really should have read any person relating to the action except for privileged communications between Mr. Parkermenko and his attorneys. But really, just, just say it. Like, then other paragraphs call for all communications between Mr. Nunes and the defendants, communication between counsel for Mr. Nunes and counsel for defendants are potentially protected by work product doctrine or joint defense privilege or sometimes settlement communication privilege to the extent that they have a shared common interest in defending the subpoena and or contesting the case. These requests should be quashed to the extent that they call for work product or privileged communications. And then, and then, we finally get to it. This subpoena constitutes a violation of Virginia's statute prohibiting strategic lawsuits against public participation or public policy. So a slap. Strategic litigation against public policy, slap suits, or wealthy litigants bullying citizens. Yeah, okay, so they're, 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 I'm going to just highlight it so we can kind of see it that it's like a one, one phrase. Strategic litigation against public policy, otherwise known as slap suits, or wealthy litigants bullying citizens making public statements, which should have been in quotes, have become a scourge in the United States, causing many states to adopt what are referenced as anti-slap statutes. California has one of the most rigorous anti-slap statutes in the United States. Virginia has one of the weakest. Notwithstanding that, the matters set forth in the complaint are clearly matters of public concern, and Mr. Parkamenko seeks dismissal of the subpoena on grounds that the alleged problematic statements are protected by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. He, therefore, should be awarded his attorney's fees. So they ask for the quash and the attorney's fees. And there's his attorney's certificate of service. This is the subpoena. This is all subpoenas look like this. Subpoenas, subpoena do 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 chase take them. Uh, so civil subpoenas look like this. It'll either say you are summoned or you have to produce documents or both, and then it'll give an address to respond to by a date and time like eleven thirty ten a.m., which is why this had to be filed before then. Here's a thought. Here's here's news for you. People try to weasel out of things. So imagine you are an opposing party and you're getting a subpoena or a request, discovery request and it says, you know, we want these documents. Well, you might find a way to say, oh, you, well, I'll only give you those documents and, and this other document, which might technically be part of that, I'm just going to pretend that it's not part of that. And so other attorneys try to prevent people from weaseling out of things by writing these broad definitions. The term document shall mean and include all written, electronic, digital, and graphical matter of any kind and description, whether produced by hand or computer or typewriter or printer or photocopier, etc. Because, you know, somebody out there is going to go, oh, you wanted a document? Oh, all I have is an email. Uh, go see the New York Times one on what is a photocopier. They tried to get out of a case by saying that they didn't understand what a photocopier was. And they reenacted it. So New York Times reenacted the entire deposition because it was that ridiculous. So you should go watch that. It's, it, it's, it's really good. So I'm not going to read through all of this, but like literally they're getting into disks, emails, text messages, instant messages, direct messages, iMessages, letters, correspondence, memoranda, notes, statements, transcripts, work papers, sound recordings, because somebody out there is going to say that's not a document. They define you, they define person, they define plaintiff, Twitter, mayor, mayor strategies, swamp, Devin Nunes mom, Devin Cow. They talk about the account here. Here's the account, the Devin Nunes Cow account. Twitter conspiracy meeting tonight, don't tell Devin. Infowars 2.0, Devin Nunes Cow. And it's got like a like a hand-drawn, like, like, like talking head news show thing on it. So they have to, they have to say all of this or else someone will try to weasel out. And then they're asking for everything. Any document that identifies names or addresses of the users of the Twitter accounts. And then all communications. And so that that that's that. And then this is the docket that shows that the subpoena was never put on the docket. Of course, I also couldn't find this document on the docket, but I don't know why that would be. So I don't know who Mr. Parkamenko is in all of this. I'm, I'm a copyright attorney and I deal with people who get subpoenas to their cert, to their internet service provider. So this looks an awful lot like Mr. Parkamenko is hosting someone or, or, or otherwise has information that would lead to 
the names of the people on that account. I'm not sure why. Is it that is it that they've served a subpoena on Twitter and Twitter sent it to Mr. Parkamenko? Well, wouldn't that mean that Mr. Parkamenko is Devin Nunes' mom or Devin Nunes' cow? But he's not acting like that. He's saying that he has the information about who it is. So he seems to me like some kind of either service provider or host or landlord, somebody who's in between, a, a middleman in, in the in the definition sense, uh, not not in the like it's a bad or good sense, but just someone in the middle between who the accounts are and Devin Nunes. So they're going through Mr. Parkamenko. That's what it looks so, like to me. But like I said, hammer and nail. I only have a hammer, so every problem looks like a nail. Uh, I, I, I'm familiar with a little bit of this, so, I, so I, I think I know the answer. But I don't know if I know the answer because there could be other reasons Mr. Parkamenko might have this information that I haven't thought of. So let us know what you think about that in the comments below. Uh, it looks pretty obvious to me that Devin Nunes has absolutely no claim. Even if Devin Nunes was a private individual, I don't know that this is rising to some level that it's defamation. Where's the damage? What's the actual damage here? There has to be measurable, provable, actual damage. And then when you add in that he's not just a politician, but he's a very prominent politician who is at the center of this impeachment inquiry, him and, and, and others seem to have been involved in some way that needs to be fleshed out. And so when you see people getting really, 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 really defensive, maybe it's okay to be defensive when you're accused of something that you didn't do, but here he's being defensive in a offensive pleading. You know, he's filing the lawsuit and he's filing the subpoena and he's going on the offensive and he's not doing it in a way that you would do it if you really had a good case. He didn't file the subpoena like he was supposed to. He didn't include uh, the defaming tweets or statements in the defamation claim or the subpoena. So they're half-assing it or he's this really prominent and likely very wealthy politician has hired a very bad attorney. Huh? None of that makes sense. This is a strategic lawsuit against public participation or a strategic litigation against public policy or whatever they called it here in, in Virginia. But this is a slap. And so this really should be struck down. The subpoena should not be granted or the, or the quash should be granted. And therefore the subpoena should be you know, vacated or, or quashed. So let us know what you think about that. Does Devin Nunes really have any defense here? Is there, is, are we really just going to say that no one's allowed to make jokes about politicians anymore? Because I'm pretty sure that people who don't like having jokes made about their politicians, I bet those people still make jokes about others' politicians, politicians they don't like. I'm pretty sure it's a two-way street, and it sounds like Devin Nunes wants it to be a one-way street. And that's hypocritical to me, and I hate that, so that's why I call it out. So let us know what you think. That's our show for today. Love you all. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this is your favorite legal news and education program supported by the financial support, the direct financial support of our supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsors.com slash law and our subscribers on twitch.tv slash lawful masses here. Thank you very much to all of our supporters in the month of December. I'm going to read the supporters for the month of November now because this is being produced on December 1st while Patreon and Sponsus are processing the pledges. So once the pledges have been processed, then we will switch over and we will get a different crawl for the videos that drop probably starting Wednesday the 4th. This happens every month, so do expect this to happen. If you pledge in December, you'll have this happening at the beginning of January. Thank you to our $50 plus supporters for the month of November. Joe Tyson, Aspernari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudra, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Snorri W, Blackleaf, Benjamin Hightoff, and Steven. And let me take a moment to say that I have looked at how much money some of you have donated over the life of this channel, and I am humbled and thankful for your contributions. As well as the $5 plus supporters, some of you have donated a tremendously large amount of money over the life of this channel. The $5 plus supporters and all of the other supporters are scrolling on the LED panel behind me and will be on the crawl in the videos that drop. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Thank you for your support. I love you all. I'll see you in the videos that drop.
Bye.